Oh guys, welcome back. Uh, this was our solar upgrade we've been talking about. We bought four more uh, life power four batteries. And uh, these are actually 24 volt batteries and our system is a 48 volt system. So I'll have to make a jumper wire. Uh, the reason I went ahead and got more 24 volt batteries is because if they ever make an inverter big enough to handle everything that we're doing in 24 volt, I'm going to switch back to 24 volt. I just like it better. But uh, we got four new ones and that'll, that'll finish filling up both cabinets. He's putting one in the bottom cabinet now and I'll, I'll make the jumper wires. <clears throat> this is my catch-all table here. But, uh, I mean, so far, it's hard to be a pretty, pretty dramatic change in it, in the batteries, in the batteries system we have how to make 12 that's over half a ton of just batteries right here in these two cabinets that's 1200 pounds these these batteries are 100 pounds a piece in the boxes and there's 12 of them so that's 1200 pounds that's over half a ton of batteries sitting right here in the floor so anyway we'll get these in and uh we'll be back That's two of them. If you wanna, if you wanna come here, I'll show them about the jumper wire. I, I bought some number two wire to make jumper jumper leads with. So as you can see right here, I've already made these. It takes two 24 volt batteries and makes one and 48 volt battery. It's still, you don't lose any uh, capacity or anything by doing it this way. You just make a 48 volt. You still have the same amount of amp hours as a 48 volt system and all that crap. So. We're gonna make another jumper wire for that one. And then we're gonna put the other two in here. Anyway, turn heavy. I think we all should tell them that you should be doing this with the power off. Uh, we made uh, cardboard pieces to cover the bus bars to keep from getting electrocuted. So. This is not a how-to video by no means because you should be turning the power off to be doing all that. That's hard to believe that's 1,200 pounds of just batteries. Right? That's not including cabinet. Easy. 
either. No. You kind of just got to try to use as much arm strength as you can instead of yep. your back. They're just so heavy. Such an awkward spot, too. There you go. Just like that. Right now, six, six batteries. Here's a better idea of what I'm doing. If you look, I go from the negative to the positive. Then you have a positive and a negative, which makes one 48 volt battery. So it'll make me one, two, three, 48 volt batteries. So anyway. All right, there's that. Alright, what I was talking about is this is a six foot number two wire. It's an inverter hook, uh, power and ground set from uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, I cut it in two foot sections and I'm going to make my jumper wires, basically. I'm going to try to keep them all two foot sections. Uh, these have already got them on here, but I'll probably redo those. Um, I don't know yet. For now, I'm just going to make the two that I need. Which I have the two right here with the one end already on it where you know where I cut it in three pieces. So what I gotta do, I gotta put these ends on it. So I have to trim that back. Figure out about how much I need. They're right there. Trim that back. Now I'm just taking roll it a little bit. So it'll go up in that barrel pretty easy. I think that I already had the right die in it. No, that's way too small. Um, I have a hydraulic crimper that I use right here. This right here, if you don't have one and you do this stuff, you better get one because it's a game changer. They have those that you can set down and you can hit it with a hammer, but I don't like those. These things right here are really, really good at this stuff. Um, that is a, about, let's see, let me try this one. This one will work. Hold your dies back in there. Slip them right down in there, like that. I've made a lot of cables with this thing right here. <coughs> Put that in there so it don't push it out. Then what I do is I basically just stick this in here, tighten it up, and then I pump it to where it kind of closes it up and holds it in there for me. like that all right <clears throat> then I'll just take and put it on the floor and make sure my wire goes all the way up in here the best it can okay that messed me off Maybe we got a lot Jordan are you trying to light for him hmm? you trying to light there's a flashlight him? right here somewhere there should be one like right in here somewhere because I just set it there Alright, shine the light right down here where you can see this right here. Just like that, that's good enough. And then you crimp it. Is I just take it and turn it more like sideways and do it again. Get a double one. There it 
That is not, that's not coming off no matter who you are. What I do is I get some good, some good electrical tape. And I have heat, heat shrink tube too, but I just don't, I don't use a whole lot of it. I just do it because I never mess, once you put it on, you never mess with this stuff. Isn't it coming off anyway? I go down pretty far on that, like that right there. Alright. And right there's one cable made right there. Alright. I'll go ahead and put it on if you'll come over here. I'll show them what Okay, what you do is you go from positive to negative. It don't matter which way, because you get you still got one the positive and one to the negative. I'll show you what I'm talking about. These batteries are off. You better make sure these are off before you do this, because if I hit something out there, you're going to not. There's a whole lot of juice in these things. All right. You're supposed to torque these, but you can only get them so tight. Okay. Now you can either do it this way, like this, which is probably how I'll do it. Instead of going this way, because I don't want to block in that breaker. So, see, I got the other ones like that. Like this, you see what I'm saying? Like that. But I think I'll just do this bottom one down, up the other way. It'll be easier to work on it that way. Okay, now right there what you have is one 48 volt battery. These are uh, 24 volt batteries at 200 amp hours. And whenever you series them together like that, you make a 48 volt battery, 100 amp hours. So, which is basically the same. Yeah, well, I meant still, each one would be like 100 amp hours. So right here I've got 600 amp hours worth of batteries in this case right here, which would be a total of 1200 amp hours. And, if it was 24 volt, I would have 2,400, 2,400 amp hours of batteries right here. This is, uh, say, 5,120 kilowatt hour each battery. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30 kilowatts right here. Damn, I need to go back to school. Let's learn math. Mm. Okay, right here's. What I was talking about, you gotta be real careful because if you take any, this bus bar right here and you hit that, it's gonna it's gonna cause a scene. So, cause this is this is live right here. This bus bar is. And as I was saying, don't do as I do. Disclaimer: I ain't no silver technician. Just I don't want to kill the power because then I won't be able to see nothing in here. In order to do it properly, you need to kill the power. So, okay. What I'm doing is I send these little wires right here. I don't know if this is a four gauge or a six gauge wire right here, but uh, these wires go from the battery to the bus bar, which is actually a pretty small wire. Uh, one day I may go back and replace these with a bigger two gauge wire from the battery to the bus bar like I'm doing everything else. But I wanted a two gauge wire to connect the two batteries together. Uh, I didn't want no uh, uh, choking point with the batteries there. So, so I might go back eventually and put the two gauge wires from there to there. And let's see here. This one goes here. Okay, 
And then this one, I'm gonna put up there. I think, but I don't know where that thing is, right there. Now you can hit this one a little bit, it's a negative, it won't do nothing, but you hit that positive while wearing this. It's gonna make you uh, higher stand up just a little dab. Try not to strip these because this is copper. Okay, and like I said, you're supposed to torque these, but just get them, I'll just get them tight. As long as you don't over tighten it and strip it, that's all that matters. Okay. So now make sure these batteries are off right here before you hook this up and it won't, it shouldn't arc at all. Now watch it. Let cute me, but it shouldn't. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of fire. As long as we don't touch it so much. That. Right there, that's all that matters. Okay, I'm not going to turn those on yet. Whew. Got all the, get the two jumper wires made and then I got them hooked to the bus bars. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the generator and I'm gonna make sure these other batteries are topped off 100% charged. And uh, before I turn, cause I did, I did already open the other four batteries and I put, charged them up to 100%. And uh, I don't wanna turn those on with the other ones at 80%. So I'm gonna charge those up before I kick these on. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll be right back. Alright guys, uh, I've got them all wired together. Uh, I've got the two 24s together to make 148, the new 24s. So it makes three 48 volt batteries in each cabinet. Uh, I'm not good at explaining like amp hours, stuff like that. But basically we have 600 amp hours in each cabinet so that's a total of 1200 amp hours now it was 800 amp hours so we just added four more so now we have 1200 amp hours um, each battery is 5120 watt hours so in other words it'll run 5120 watts for one hour each battery so so that's 5 10 15 20 25 30 that's 30 60 kilowatts of batteries uh, if that don't do everything that we need to do, then we're doing something wrong with our solar. Uh, I mean, it was perfectly fine before, so this right here should be a major, major upgrade to four more batteries. And as you can see, both cabinets are completely full now. Um, maybe eventually down the road, after we get the addition built on the house and I have a room for all this crap, I may buy another cabinet and six more batteries. I may, I'm not sure on that yet. We'll see how these do first, but. But uh, I think these right here is going to do everything we need them to do, especially after I get the other solar on top of the house, solar panels, rather. So, uh, what I've done, like I said, yeah, you look over the mess up here, it's all the stuff I use to work with on this prep. But uh, what I've done is I cracked the generator, and I've got this set at 55 amps. This is a charge burner. This is here, I got it set at 55 amps. And what I've done is I made a plug in here, and uh, it just, the charge burner plugs directly into that, into the end of the plug-in I put on, and then there's like a a uh, eight gauge drop cord that runs from here out with a plug-in. I plug it into the generator. So when you crank the generator, this plug-in comes alive and powers up this charge burner. I don't run my generator into here because uh, if you don't have a uh, pure sine wave inverter and you run it in here, or if you run it in your breaker box. Uh, it could damage some of your stuff like your TVs, your refrigerators, and microwaves and stuff like that. Uh, anything that electronically, because uh, we damaged, uh, we had just a regular 24 volt and, inverter, 
and uh, it actually blew a microwave completely up on us so you gotta watch you want a pure sine wave uh, inverter but like I said it doesn't matter either way when you run it into a, basically a battery charger so what I do is I take this battery charger and I got it wired directly into the bus bars right here the, the positive and negative off this goes to the bus bars and it charges the batteries and basically runs the system while it's charging so now I have that charging right now like I said at 55 amps and once once these eight batteries come up to 100%, I will kick on the four new batteries because I don't want to turn them on until the other ones are up kind of level with it. Because, like I said, I took uh, I took this charger here and I charged each one of the new batteries until they hit 100%. And uh, I want the rest of the batteries to be 100% before I kick them on. Because you don't want to put, there was an 80, well, 80 some percent a minute ago. I don't want to turn those batteries on with uh, 80 some percent batteries because it'll, it just isn't, uh, I don't know the proper word for that stuff, but it isn't synced up with it really good. It, it could affect it in some way and I don't want it, I don't want it to affect the new batteries because this is very, very expensive right here. These two cabinets right here with these batteries in it, that's five, 10, 15, let's see, two figure five right at. Eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars. Just say, just say roughly taxes and all twenty grand right here in these two cabinets. These two cabinets and the stuff that's in them is right, roughly twenty grand. So you you don't want to just switch them on without doing it properly, I guess. Uh, and as I was saying before, uh, they, they are twenty-four volt batteries, and this is a forty-eight volt system. So what I done is I made took two batteries and made a forty-eight volt battery. And you do that by going negative. You do series negative to positive and then you have a positive left and a negative left so that's your 48 volt leads off of it so basically have three 48 volt batteries in there uh the purpose behind that like i was saying is if something happens to this say a grid down situation something happens in the world tragically happens in the world uh we have a couple 24 volt inverters that i can take this down and replace it with and if they ever come out with something this large and 24 volt I'm going back to 24 volt because I like the way it charges better. I like the way it just, I like the way it just does better. Uh, a lot of people won't agree with that, but I really don't care. So, uh, but anyway, right now it's 48 volt system, and I continue to buy all these are 24 volt batteries. So just in case we need to switch back, if something happens to this, we have a fail safe. We can go back to 24 volt. And let's see, uh, I'll be right back and I'll show you the charging on it. All right, guys, as you can see, like I was saying, this right here shows uh, that it's running uh, 44 amp, 43, 44 amps into the batteries right now. 2,300 watts going into the batteries right now. They're at 90%. And once that hits 100%, I'll kick the new batteries on, and we'll see how they do. I'm at 718 amp hours right now. As soon as it hits 800 amp hours, I'll turn the new ones on, and I will update that to 1,200 amp hours. So everything will update together. And uh, we'll see how it does in the morning, too. And then I'll do like a... Uh, before the video ends, I'll show it in the morning, like where the charge and all that crap is in the morning. So, anyway. I just switched on the new batteries. Uh, I have the generator running outside. And I've topped off the other eight batteries to 100%, which at 56.6 volts right now. 56.6. According to that, everyone I'm reading something different, I don't know exactly why, but I have them set at 56.2 right here charging to 56.2 volts all right so i went ahead and i switched on the new four batteries and they're online now they're working uh they're completely charged those was 100 percent like i said i was trying to charge the other ones to 100 percent before i flipped those on because i didn't want these to be 80 percent the new ones to be 100 percent because i didn't want that conflict with them i wanted them all to be pretty much the same before i flipped them on okay they are on they're online they are working um I still have this right here running. It's not doing anything. I'll show you. Um, right here, if you look, this right here is a little camera that we use to monitor when we're not here to monitor the batteries. Okay, if you look, the batteries are 100%. Zero amps coming out of the batteries because the generator's running. Uh, the, uh, the charger in there's running. Okay, but see if you'll notice it's still at 800 amp hours. Okay, so I need to change that. Hold that for three seconds. Capacity right there. 
So what we want to do is go over here. We want to add that to one, then go down to 12. Because we added 400 amp hours to the batteries. So now we've got 1200 amp hours. Okay. We have 1200 amp hours. Okay. I left it. The high bolt is on 57 volts. And the low is on 48 volts. I don't want them, I want this to alarm when it gets down 48 volts, which is never, it never has. So, anyway, that's set where I want it, 1200 amp hours. Okay. We'll go back out of here. Okay, now you see it dropped down to 67% because I went up to 1200 amp hours. So what we want to do is you hold this up arrow. All right, now we're 1200 amp hours at 100%. So that's where we're at. All right, 56.2 volts according to this right here. If you see right there, 56.2 according to this. Zero amps coming out of the batteries because the generators weren't running, like I said. Uh, but anyway, Seems pretty loud when it kicks on that fan is. I mean, it, we get used to it. It's not that bad. The grow wash, the, the fans are pretty loud in the grow wash. But uh, this thing stays on 24/7. We never ever turn it off. I didn't even turn it off when put the new batteries in there because I, I'm not shutting the power off. I'm just not. Uh, the day we hung this up a year ago, roughly give or take. It's, I switched it on right here and it has not been switched off since. Um, same way with these batteries, the original eight. They have not been switched off yet, it, you know, since we bought them. The, so we had these for two years, these for one year, and just got the other four. So it called we changed the battery. Well, maybe three years on those, three, two. Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, they have not been off since we bought them. Uh, as far as the EG4 batteries go, uh, I really wouldn't have anything else right now because um, it's the best ones we've found so far. They're just very expensive, like I said. Anywhere between 18 and 20 grand, these two cabinets right here. Cabinets and batteries. So, then I also bought the external charger, like I said. I showed all this before. And this is the 12K inverter. Uh, this right here is the uh, charge control that I bought to hook the 12 panels up. I'm going to buy probably uh, two more of these. But I'm kind of kind of up on the edge about that i may get another another couple of these because the midnight solar right here you just cannot beat them you just can't no matter what you do you can't beat these midnights this stuff here will never compete with midnight solar to me it never will it's just you can't run a higher voltage on these you can only run 150 volts on these you can run 500 volts on this so anyway i still have the old faithful out back too that i can use it's just sitting there as you can see just hanging there but guys that's our install of the new uh pretty major upgrade on our batteries our solar system and hopefully this summer sometime we'll be adding the other solar panels up because you know you know add, add more batteries you'll need more solar panels to charge those batteries um but right now i mean I, i'm very pleased with what we got and the ag4 stuff uh signature solar stuff um so anyway guys if, uh, if you haven't done so yet uh please like share subscribe uh a lot of people that watch our videos are not subscribed so it, you know it won't take you but just a second to hit that subscribe button it's free it won't cost you anything uh, you can keep up with what we do here on the mountain and stuff like that. We're 100% off grid, as you can see. This is all we have, uh, and we survive on it. We live on it. Um, anyway, thanks, guys.